Well then, Bunny, it's the holidays, the yes, Christmas. And, and last week, we watched a whole month of Christmas movies to get us in the Christmas spirit. And so, what with it now being December, it's now time for us to watch a bunch of Christmas movies. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I just <laughs> do it. Everything's so depressing. Oh, my God. <laughs> and now, I, I'm, now I'm supposed to wrap a bunch of freaking presents and pretend to care about Jesus? <laughs> Literally, the nuclear bombs could be falling at any second. Yes. While our president golfs his fat ass mm -hmm. in Florida. I'm just not fucking feeling the Christmas season right the, now. The spirit. Yeah. I'm not feeling the spirit at all. It's hard to feel the joy of Christmas when your racist dictator ruler is leading a nation that hates him directly into the path of nuclear annihilation. <laughs> so one thing I will say for living in Oklahoma, we're definitely getting bombed last. Yeah, you think? Oh, yeah. No North Korean knows where Norman, Oklahoma is, you know? We're going to be first. We're going to be first. We're number one. We're number one. I, I could see NORAD from here. Well, you can't see NORAD. You see a mountain, but you know NORAD's in there. I figure the first place that's getting I figure that that what with America being America if I was I would be more worried about nuclear annihilation if I was living in New York, LA, San Francisco, San Diego, anywhere on the uh west coast. Mm -hmm. I think the last place they're going to worry about is Oklahoma cuz hell, I think most Americans can't find Oklahoma let alone uh Kim Jong Un, pretty sure he just started getting episodes of WCW where the NWO show up. <laughs> pretty sure he just got the bad album from Michael Jackson, so I'm pretty sure he can't find Shawnee, you know? Yeah. I feel fairly safe here. And he, and he for, wouldn't be know, able to say it either. Yeah. I feel f a part Apart from the tornadoes and the racists, I feel fairly safe here. You know? That's positive. That's very yeah. positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, it's hard to feel the joys of Christmas at this point in time, but it's Christmas whether we want it to be or not. And we're kicking off this month with a real shit fest. <laughs> 1992 holiday bomb Robin Williams in toys that's so funny i just saw a porn with that exact same title <laughs> pretty sure robin williams was in it though How about that huh now with that small intro out of the way i wanted to touch upon how we got to this bizarre shit stain of a movie last year we did a full month of christmas movies right yes. like a full of holiday films and christmas films this year I totally didn't fucking plan that. <laughs> oh. So the fact that this, the first movie of December 2017, is in fact a Christmas movie, or at least a Christmas adjacent movie, uh -huh. is completely coincidental. <laughs> okay. We are sometimes professional enough to plan shit ahead, but this is not one of those times. Yeah, you really can't count us count on us for that. The only reason that we are watching this right now is because it literally, the point that we are recording this, this movie comes off of Netflix the next day. Really? Okay. Yeah. So we, I just knew we had to watch it now. It's just a coincidence that it's a Christmas movie. So that being said, I now have a whole month of Christmas movies planned. Nice. Okay. And, uh... Uh, Natasha helped me with one or two of them and uh, one I've been waiting to do for like a year and then uh, yeah okay and then that one. 
And then I I was going to wait until the end of the podcast. I'm just going to bring it up now. What I want to do is we do these new movies and we do these old movies that, that, that we've always wanted to do and these things that we find. But why, what I want to do is start a tradition. Once a year, at around the same time, we do the same movie every year. And it's... It, okay. It, it's December. And so fans of the show know we do blank now. Yes. So I went back to some of the movies that we did at the end of the year, and it's up to two films that we would do every year. And okay. I want you to choose. I want you to choose. Natasha said that she's pretty sure she knows which one you'll choose, but whichever one you choose, it's going to be bad. Okay. <laughs> For the family. Whatever you choose, it's going to be bad. But, but it's between either... Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny or the Star Wars Holiday Special? Oh, Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. Nice. Nice. Natasha figured you'd go with Star Wars, but I like that choice. I like that choice. It's a but, different choice. Okay, if we, if we do it, though, we have to do both whatever it was that we saw and Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh, Thumbelina and the Jack of the Is Beanstalker. That, was that Thumbelina? Yeah, okay. Uh huh. Yeah, Thumbelina. That's the one yeah. we watched. But, yeah. But I, I think if we're going to do it every year, then it's got to be the both of them. We have to find the both of yeah. them. Not the whole thing. We'll just watch the, the segment. Yeah. Well, maybe you will. Some of us are more professional than that. Well, we would watch. You would pick one. You would pick. <laughs> you would pick. You would pick one, and that one you would watch the whole thing. Yeah. And then you would just watch, instead of watching the whole movie again with another middle bit, you just watch the middle bit. Yeah. Gotcha. No, I gotcha. So, so Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny, that is our yearly film we watch. I'm down with that. I am absolutely down with that, too. Well, shit. We've put it off long enough. I guess we have to talk about this week's film in eventually. I don't really understand why. I don't I don't see why we would have to do that. This is not communist Russia, damn it. Toys. <laughs> Bizarre ass 1992 Robin Williams film and when I say bizarre I really mean bizarre. I yeah. did not remember how strange this film was. Yeah. Cuz again, I haven't I haven't watched it this century. <laughs> See I now, I haven't watched it from 2000 on. I just have vague memories of watching it in the 90s. See now, I I had the feeling it was from the 90s or something like that, and it kind of shows cuz Robin Williams is still doing Robin Williams shtick. Mm -hmm. Which was the only reason you would put him in a movie. You yeah. know? Yeah. But he made some reference. God damn, I wish I could remember what it was. A, a weird little reference came out, which in my head placed it around 2004, 2005. I believe it was the scene where... Robin Williams is meeting the general in the toy factory, and he goes, mm, mm, oh, mm, hey, mm, I'm Robin Williams. Ooh, hey, sometime <laughs> in the future, uh, Matt Lauer will be showing his winky to people. Ooh, like I thought that was weird. Yeah. So I thought that was a pretty recent reference. Uh, Matt when did more Robert do that? When did he he go totally psychotic? Who? Marv Albert. Oh, Marv Albert. No, I said uh, 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 Matt Lauer. Oh, Matt Lauer. Yeah. Why? What happened with him? I haven't heard anything about him. Oh, he was fired from the Today Show. There, there are reports and allegations and details of that have emerged. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I got the article up on my phone of uh, the new details that have emerged. Like, at first... Like it was just like 
what Wednesday morning, and suddenly he's not on the Today Show, and they had to announce it like live on the Today Show that like, oh yeah, he was just fired, and that's and, it. <laughs> yeah, there are allegations, and that's about it. But now details have emerged, and apparently, I don't know, he's just another rich white pervert. They're all white men. Just want to take this time to say, yeah. There's no reports of, I don't know, Esai Morales being creepy with someone. No, there isn't. Cheech still has a job. Mm-hmm. Chris Rock isn't in trouble. No. Um, the new Mr. Sulu from the Star Treks is still getting work. Yes. And so, he deserves it. Yeah. I mean, they're, I'm just saying they're all white men. Yes. Except for the original Mr. Sulu, but that's a different story. <laughs> so, I think the problem with toys, the problem is this. Yeah. The problem with the film, and the reason why it tanked in, in the box office in, in when it came out during the holidays in 1992... The problem with the film is this. I have a question for you, Bunny. Okay. How would you categorize this film? Robin Williams shtick. I know, but like, okay, so if you go to this film and say, oh, this film is going to be filled with Robin Williams shtick. And there's a bizarre musical number where all of these toy employees are singing a depressing Tori Amos song. Yes. Like, what the fuck? And then you <laughs> see these weird art scenes where it's... Uh, uh, like, I suppose you could call it a comedy. But it's not that funny. No. It reminds me of why I hated Robin Williams in anything other than as a DJ in Nom. <laughs> I mean, that movie, that's fucking gold, Pony Boy, and I love that to death. But beyond that, I have a very low, I had a very low tolerance for Robin Williams. I pissed people off when Robin Williams killed himself, and I said, and I, I, I tweeted, uh, Robin Williams was the funniest man I've ever seen. Oh, wait, did I say funniest? I meant furriest. He was the <laughs> furriest man I've ever seen. He had so much hair. Oh, he totally did. Just all hair. And people were really pissed off at me for that, because it was literally like an hour after like, it, like the news broke, you know? Yeah. So then, like, okay, so it's a comedy, but it's not a funny comedy. Is it a kid's film? It certainly wants to be a kid's film. Yeah, it really didn't know? strike me as a kid's film at all. Oh, no, there's no way that there's a, that it's a kid's film. It wants to be. It probably thinks it is, but there's sex jokes and shit yeah. in P13. And then the battle scene where the toys are dying in battle with the war toys... That's disturbing for a Maxwell. Yes. For a Maxwell-aged person, this can be a disturbing-ass movie. So what, is, so what is this? Is this an analogy for war? Is that what this whole thing is about? This is just like a war analogy? Uh, well, there was definitely that angle to it. Yeah. Like, this is more of like a fable. What this should have been is, is, is like maybe just an hour, you know, like this might have made an OK Christmas special. Yeah, this and the film was way too long. This is a way too long. Yeah. film. This film, two hours and one minute. This does not need to be that long. Yeah, I mean, you're expecting things to be kind of cheap and stuff like that. So, yeah. And then the film wants to be a romance, yeah. but like I don't believe Robin Williams as a romantic lead. No. And then my love for Robin Wright begins and ends with Princess Bride. Yeah, I have not liked her that, in any other thing. 
Beyond that, she is dead to me. She gave Forrest Gump AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> and I am 100% convinced of that, and no one can tell me otherwise. She gave Forrest Gump AIDS. Yeah. And, and, I, and but her it, part in that movie, anybody could have played that part in Forrest Gump. Oh, yeah. Gump. No, no. Anybody could play that, play yeah. that part. And I remember seeing Forrest Gump and seeing the scene where, like, the, the swelling music at the end of, like, a free bird starts playing. Yeah. It, it, and she's, like, on the roof, and she's all strung out on drugs, and she's going to kill herself. And then she chickens out at the last second. I'm like, wow, what a powerful scene. Truly, every time I hear this exciting end to Freebird, I will only think of this film, Forrest <laughs> Gump. And then Kingsman fucked that up for me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson's bad guy character creates this like app on a phone that turns off your inhibitors and turns everyone super ultra-violent. And so there's this beautiful, beautiful choreographed scene in a church where it's Colin Firth's character surrounded by all these angry southern rednecks in a church. And then the app goes off and they all start trying to kill themselves. And Colin Firth just kills everyone. And it's perfectly in time with the end of Freebird. And I'm like, damn, take that, Forrest Gump. (laughs) <laughs> I felt the same way about Hooked on a Feeling with uh, 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 Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, And I thought, Hooked on a Feeling, playing during Reservoir Dogs, truly, whenever I hear the song Hooked on a Feeling, I will only think of Reservoir Dogs. And then uh, Guardians of the Galaxy ruined it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And like, well, yeah, and, don't, and don't forget, for Freebird, there's also The Devil's Rejects. Oh yes, no, that beautiful ending. Yeah, yeah, that was that was also the beginning and ending of me caring about Rob Zombie. <laughs> a House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects. Now I don't have to care about Rob Zombie anymore. <laughs> yeah. Hi, hi, how you doing? Matt, did you watch SPM? For those of you who are uninitiated out there, that stands for Supernatural. Did you finally get to watch the new episode of Supernatural? Bella's is a little bit pissed about that. I had a conversation with you for like three minutes until I realized you were you had your headphones in. Mm. And you screwed me up with that so much that now at work we have headphones. And every time I see someone walking around with headphones, I assume they're listening to music. Although, of course, they're not. That's, those are just like walkie-talkies to talk to other employees. But I assume, oh, they're probably just listening to four non-blondes. I'll leave them alone. Oh, wait, I'm at fucking work. And <laughs> so, you're not my wife. Hey! Yeah, I'm totally fucked up with the headphones at work is what I'm saying. So how you doing? And, and I really want to know because last week... Was bullshit. You were really upset. With Supernatural, you said they jumped the shark. And you were like, Ooh. oh my god, they jumped the shark. And we were like, so pissed. They so I'm interested. They very, uh... Like an evil twin. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you literally like, just I pay attention. I pay attention to Supernatural, is what I want to say. No, you pay attention oh. to what I say to you. Huh. You don't pay attention to Supernatural. Yeah, yeah Supernatural. I do. You wanted, to know what the ti- you wanted to tell me what the title of the episode was, and I already vaguely knew what the That's title was. That's because I asked you to do something. Supernatural And related. I paid attention. Only because I asked you to. Okay, wait. Anyway. Yeah, they totally pulled a, a fucking soap opera troupe, trope and uh, uh, introduced an evil twin. Oh. Not be an evil twin. Sam's evil twin, Smam. No. He has a beard. No. A goatee and a no. twisty mustache. No, no, no. Shmeen, the evil twin I just of Dean. Really, I mean, I like the guy that they brought back only because he's an interesting person and they've got a decent character development with him. See, like one of those British Kingsman dudes? Yeah. Yeah, men of letters. Um, British men of letters. British men of letters. That's the difference. Yeah. Uh, Bella loves the British men of letters, no, even though they I tried to annihilate all of the American hunters. Can you stop? 
But yeah, they totally jumped the shark there. Like, everyone's like, no, honey, they jumped the shark a long time ago. But I'm all, really? Because, I mean, they couldn't turn this any gayer. They just literally made it a fucking soap opera. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm interested to see if, like, this After new After the episode, cowboy episode, they were just like, you know what? We're done. Here you go. We gave you the gay with the cowboys. Yeah, there was a cowboy episode recently that was very heavy on the gayness. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, like the opening scene was literally Dean saying I do in front of a cross to Castiel. Like okay. okay, so they just got married. And then they go on one of Dean's uh uh So much queer baby. One of his like basically fantasies and and went to uh, a hotel that was cowboy thing and he, he geeked out Christ. and they got to wear cowboy hats and it was it was so fucking and the gay. Caps. <laughs> um, and to top it all off, like they started, they they subtly started war because they starred one of the the guys that was in it was literally a star of a gay romance movie. Really? Okay. Yes, the guy that was the the sheriff or whatever he was, he he starred in a gay romance film. And so I'm like, okay, you guys are basically saying we're done pretending. Here's all the gay. The least you could do. I mean, seriously, you couldn't get more gay unless you had them kiss or fuck on screen. It was ridiculous. Oh, so ridiculous. Um, and then last week they decided to jump the shark with saying, okay, now it's just a fucking soap opera because here's the evil twin trope. And, uh, oh, wait, no, he's not an evil twin. Oh, just fucking with you. But that's the same thing soap operas do. Yeah. So, yeah. like... So did they save it with this week's episode? And last week they had the evil um, Colonel Sanders guy kidnapped. I saw him in the, like the weird white outfit. Yeah, he's got like he's some sort of sword evil, or something. And, and Dean calls him the evil Colonel Sanders. Yeah. So they're self aware on this shit. Yeah. So I'm. And then he kidnapped Cass, and it's like, okay, so this guy's gonna die because Dean's obviously gonna storm hell to get Cass back. So I didn't watch the episode, but I watched Bella watch the episode because so literally gay. she would watch it and then pause it like two minutes in and go, what the hell is going on? And then she'd watch <laughs> it for another minute and then she'd pause it. Okay. I need mom here. And then she'd watch See? it again. And then she'd like, I need to go back. And she'd be mine five minutes and watch That's it again. And I'm like, you can't the hell? follow a storyline because Bella usually is able to follow a storyline. Yeah. The thing is, is that episode last episode was a, uh, there's two writers, Buck, Buck, I don't remember their names, but we call them Bucklining. It's a man and a woman. And yeah. the woman's like married to one of the producers. And they are shit writers. They fuck up the pacing. They always have some sort of fucked up sexual rapey type vibe thing going on. Bella's watched all of the of Supernatural episodes. and I've never seen no. her like. She doesn't watch Okay, but I've never, like seen her, six, I've never seen her like balk yes, at this exactly. before. Exactly. She was like freaking out over last week's Supernatural. The only reason that it was even remotely watchable last week was because of the director. Yeah. Usually the pacing is fucked up and just. Yeah, that's what you said. The director like saved it. Richard so, State. Yeah, the guy yeah. who played the uh, game. But um, this is their second episode. And I, we firmly believe, my meta group and I were talking, we firmly believe that they took uh, Buckland aside and told them, y'all need to fucking chill. Okay. Because the every single fan. All of them. And I think the one thing that we can all agree on is we don't like Buckling. We don't like those two writers because seriously, every time that they write something, there has to be some crazy rapey vibe to the episode. Yeah, and I really remember saying that. Yes, yeah. really. We have Buckling and Bingo. We have squares that we can write off. Uh, like um, sexualized violence is one of them because there's always some creepy rapey vibe to their episodes. Uh huh. Every single time. One of the, uh, it, the opening of season 12 had the British men of letters chick Tony uh, with Sam tied up, gave him some sort of potion to fuck with his head and made him dream that him and her had just fucked so that she could try to get information out of him. Really? So, okay. It's not just a mind fuck, but that's a mind fuck where you are basically physically fucking. You are like, about to make a, Eleanor rape. fall asleep while standing up. I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> I'm totally okay with the supernatural conversation. I just want to say right now, because I honestly don't have a lot about Robin Williams' toys movie. He's dead. Because this yeah, movie is not just really. Like, that, like, this movie is such shit that I'm like, let's talk about supernatural. Because <laughs> I don't have a lot. The boys turned out to be the scorpion. 
And I knew that we were going to be. The Scorpion King? Like The Rock? I'm just trying to bring it back to what we were talking about from before. We were talking about The Rock. We had a good conversation. That's a good point. Bella hasn't seen it. But what I'm saying is, did this episode, this week's episode, did that save it from last week? No. No, it, it was still shit? I mean, it wasn't shit, but I mean, it was very... <sighs> I always figure that, like, if there's an episode that kind of like, disappointed you and made you feel like shit, that then the next episode has to, like, bring its A game in- and try and make it better from the last no, episode. No, I'm very neutral on this episode. Yeah. Um, they mirrored Crowley and they mirrored Charlie. And no! Was Crowley back? No, honey. A mirror. Yeah. Uh, a King of the Crossroads. Well, he didn't call himself the King of the Crossroads. He is a V Crossroads demon. Um, he's the one that you saw at the beginning. Crap. Yeah, he was basically a Crowley mirror. They were trying to replace Crowley, um, and they basically tried to replace Charlie. Going so far to have the chick say, literally say, "Sorry, Charlie," Ooh. and then at the oh. very end, when they That's saw a her off, reference, just when, to let you, when they saved her and they saw her off, that. they brought her to a bus stop just like they did Charlie, yeah. and she gave them a hand gesture just like Charlie did. Charlie yeah. gave him the Vulcan hand salute. Yeah. She was just like, yeah. and Charlie was like, later, bitches. So they're trying to mirror Charlie with this chick, and I'm not. So she it. was like, so she was like, someone chuck a cupcake at me. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that I. We're gonna strike that from the record no. because I don't, I don't want my husband to be affiliated with just saying that. way, in any way related to this conversation. Okay. I keep getting that that Avril Lavigne song confused with the song from Sugar Rush. Oh my god, yes. For some strange reason, I'm trying to sing along to the Avril Lavigne Hello Kitty song, but I keep just singing the Sugar Rush song from Wreck It Ralph. Yeah. Sugar Rush. S U G A R. I think this part's in Japanese. Sugar Rush. Sugar Rush. Yeah. That's what I keep saying. It's just because cupcakes and all the frosting. Yeah, yeah cupcakes and frosting, yeah. Light them up, handle so, yeah, ahead. I'm not, I'm not sure about this episode. I mean, whatever. She did a good job, the, the writer. I can't remember her name right now. She did a good job. Next week is the series. The mid-season, winter. The mid-season Yeah, finale. the mid-season finale. No! I still am... I still have not gotten used to mid-season finales. That wasn't a thing back in my day. No. But uh, Jack comes back. I think it's weird that it's like, it's December, we're I done have, until February. Like, that's weird. Because, like, close your ears, Bella. Earmuffs. They, Bella. They, they burn, they burn that's the, a the demon's bones. And when you burn the demon's bones, it kills them. They're dead. Yeah. And he had the other half of the spell that he was using as a bargaining chip. And I don't, I firmly do not believe that either one of the Winchesters would have allowed that to burn, but it ended up burning. Like yeah. at the beginning, he offers them first half of the um, spell to find Jack. And then he says, when you guys do the job for me, I'll give you the second half. Well, then they burn his bones because he tries to kill Chick. And so they're like, all right, fine. Here, have your bones. Yeah. Save the Chick. Because she's the human. Button. I'm talking to you, though. No, I talked to the podcast. Okay, I'm talking to the podcast now. Uh, and, and so... Okay, I got the beer. Now you can talk to me. They eventually, because they chose her life over their life, uh, I mean, over the demon, killing the demon, uh-huh. she burns the bones, and they don't grab the other half of the spell in time, so the other half of the spell burns up. And I firmly, firmly don't believe that that's something that the Winchesters would allow to happen. Because, let's face it, this is season 13. And if we're to believe anything, they've been doing this since Dean was four and Sam was... They've been doing this for at least 13 years. That's a long last time. Well, I mean, and that's not considering the fact that Dean was 26 when they started this. That was 13 years ago. So how old is he now? What, almost 40? Is he pushing 40? There's no way he would have let that burn. Yeah. So that was a little unbelievable to me. Can I, uh, I was can, irritated. Can, can I just touch on something you just said? My butt? N- no, although you have a great butt. No, um, speaking as a non-supernatural fan, mm-hmm. 13 fucking seasons, and they just got picked <laughs> up 
They just no. got picked up for a 14th season, or is it not official yet? It's unofficial. They're just waiting for the call on when to start their filming. This show yeah, should basically. get a lot more credit for being around um, this long. Well, see, if this show was ER, NBC would be coming all over <laughs> themselves talking about much- ER, longest show on TV. <laughs> You know, but well, Jared and Jensen are pretty much given carte blanche. Like, like, it's basically on whether they want to continue or not, and they've said that they're like, it's it's if we want to keep going, they're going to keep going. I'm just saying that in the press yeah, and a, on TV and like, yeah, but you know, they what? should they make do... so much of a bigger deal about this. Like, yeah. thirteen I, seasons, goddamn. Push though, like, when was the last time you saw such a big push for Supernatural? Yeah, I guess all the, the Entertainment point. Weekly magazine <laughs> covers yeah. that are coming out yeah. and. His name is Hetch. No, no, yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. Release? Anyway. <laughs> no, but the demon. Thank you, and Bunny. The I thought name, that was really funny. Because the, they, the, they were doing a heist. Yeah. And it was smash and grab. Yeah. And he was like, smash and grab? Really? She's like, not a real name. She's like, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, they, they're giving it a, better, a bigger push. And I, I think. Yeah, and, and their their thing when when they were on Conan was 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 funny yeah, and cute. Yeah, like they are. Yeah, they were both on Conan. They're that was like, that was because funny. It is impressive, and people are noticing. They're like, wait a minute, you're still around? Hold on, let's talk about this for a minute. Yeah, because you're still fucking here. Yeah, thirteen years later. That's good. I, they deserve a bit more credit for being around as long as they. And that's the thing, though. It's like have they're, been they're on TV. That's this fucking long. impressive. But what I'm I, I'm thinking is that I don't know if it's going to last after 14 seasons. No! If they they get the 14th season and they, I don't know, they're going to wrap it up. They have to. Jared I and thought Jensen, for sure 13 them, would be the end, just logistically. I did just, too, just, considering everything that's going yeah, on in their lives. But, number 13, I thought, like, if you're going to end it anywhere, you would do it in 13, because it's a supernatural if show. I need to look and see if going to air on this 13th of any of the months. Because yeah. if they don't have a season 13... Yeah. Like on the 13th, I'm mad since they already missed the premiere on the 13th. Like yeah. you could have arranged that. I'm so yeah. disappointed in them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm pretty sure after the 14th season, they're probably going to wrap it up because Wayward Sisters is going to get picked up. And they're probably. I hope it does. I hope it does too. But you know how much hate that That's is a getting? Good point. What the heck is Wayward Sisters? Donna and Jody. Remember how Jody took All of the player? women from Supernatural are that getting their own been killed. Spin- that haven't been killed because they kill off a lot they of women. They kill off everybody. Are getting their own spin off show called Wayward Sisters. It was Remember it was Jody? like a fan. And uh, what's her name from that was with the vampire family? You don't. She's she's so far behind. Thank you for 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 helping uh, stretch out the podcast. <laughs> But we can keep talking. I mean, I got. I know, but I should now. probably finish up the, this fucking toys movie because uh, eh, toys happened and they broke because that's what have happens you ever seen to every toys? toy. <laughs> have you ever seen toys? Just like Robin Williams, he broke and he died because he killed himself. He was Damn. broken. What? Hey, hey, hey! No. Robin Williams is right now in heaven playing with Jesus's gel balls. Yes, yes, he is. Gel balls. And he's making jokes about it. And Jesus is like, oh, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> okay. Oh, with your balls. Oh. <laughs> Let me dip my balls in it. Nice. <laughs> I got her. Have you ever seen toys? Nope. Don't give a shit. You know, you've never seen toys? No, I know. He's dead, though. You, you're mom. not missing oh. anything. I know. LL L- Cool J is in it. And I, 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 I was cost- it like three? He was pretty young. I I constantly mentioned the movie to Deanna because there's a scene where they're all like eating food in like the commissary of the toy factory, and LL Cool J gets up all upset and he does his pouty face and he goes, "My food keeps touching. Yeah. I'm a military man. I like a military tray. I need a military meal. My peas need to not touch my uh, uh, mashed potatoes." And it's like that was Deanna growing up, oh, and that's so, Deanna now. Let's see, let's like she would that. always freak out when her food was touching, and I'm like, "Oh my god, you're LL Cool J in toys!" And she's like, "What?" And I'm like, I, "Oh my god, I'm old, but that's LL Cool J in toys." Do you know what makes me feel old? <laughs> when my old age. I'm sorry. Wait, what makes you feel old? 
when my professor, my chemistry professor, brings up something and the only people who laugh are him, me, and the 60-year-old student. Oh. Yeah, and everybody else in the class is like, what? And I'm like, wow. Like, I'm not even close to your guys' age yet. I find that funny, and nobody else in the class gets it. Nobody. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. I'm feeling this now because I'm slightly older than you. Don't correct me. <laughs> I swear to God. But it, eventually, <laughs> this will get to you. Eventually, you're going to turn on the classic rock station, and fucking Chumba Wumba's going to be on there. Yes. Singing about how get knocked no. down, but I get up again. No, you're going to turn on happens. classic rock. Like, I was singing a song. I will walk by pond. I, I was singing some song the other. Was it at the. I don't care. I don't, to somebody. I don't remember who it was. Eek. Was it you? I you don't know. fucking know. I went to somebody, and then they were like, what? And I was like, holy shit, I'm old. And it wasn't even that, to me, it wasn't even that old. Yeah. But to them, of course it was old, because I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. When I was growing up, you turned on a classic rock station, it was 50s and 60s. Uh-huh. And there'd be Beatles weekends and Elvis weekends. And then if you went to AM, you could hear like 1930s and 40s music and like swing music and stuff. And now... Classic rock is 70s and 80s and stuff that I grew up listening to that was new, and I can't hear any 50s and 60s, let alone the 30s and 40s shit. AM radio is just filled with a bunch of angry white people now. <laughs> when I was growing up, there was 40s and 50s, 40s. <laughs> swing music. Everything swing music. With, honey, honey, everything is filled with angry white people now because angry white people, they're losing their grip. Angry white people okay? come yeah. over they are losing their hold over every minority. Yep. So they are all angry. Yeah. Well, I mean, not me. I'm not angry about it. Yeah. But the majority of white people are now angry because they're losing their grip. So that's all you're going to hear about. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to call. Well, I'm going to call it a wrap on, on my guest appearance. I'm Drop sorry. Is wine. it because of like, Belch? No, that way you can wrap up toys and I can go back oh, to the Oh, fucking group. toys. You keep reminding me that Sorry. we're doing this movie. Um, <laughs> I fucking picked it. Yeah. Bonnie, did you tell you the movies that I picked out for you guys for this movie? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Natasha wants us to do Die Hard. Do fucking Die Hard. It is a Christmas oh my fucking God, movie. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. See, is... Bonnie is with me. No. There's no but to that. It's a Christmas There's movie. There's no but to that. It's a Christmas. It's one of those Christmas movies that is a movie that happens to be set in Christmas, but it's more of the movie. And when I think of that, I on my brain automatically goes to oh, like Iron Man three. I love that so much more than Die Hard. Die Hard is like both. a both. You have a fucking month, Steve. Yeah. No. 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 Cur- no. Okay. No. Yeah. Uh huh. No. There's always Christmas. You don't. Ice cream no. bunny. <laughs> None of those. Ah, pick one of those three. I haven't even brought up. Do Die Hard to Iron Man 3 and pick one of those other ones. I haven't. I have not even you brought up do repeat. the Rhapsody Street. Oh my God. I haven't okay, even brought no, that up yet. I haven't even no, brought it up yet. More. I haven't even Different told him yet. I haven't even told him yet. Next week. <laughs> Shows next week, we're doing slippery stairs. That's fantastic. No, but, that is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. no, I can't even argue with that. That's amazing. Yeah, um, no, you don't need Kirk Cameron, you don't need to do whatever. Fucking Die Hard is shit. so popular, though. That's the that's the is reason. It, yeah. that's, the problem, yeah. that's the problem that I have with Die Hard is just that, like, I turn on, uh, like. Bob's Burgers when they're talking about Die Hard. I and tried to ask me for my fucking ideas and I and gave them to you. And that's a good idea. Like, oh, yeah, good, good ass fuck to you, but I don't want to take idea. that. Fuck your ideas. Take them up your ass. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. You're shoving them in my face. I, do you want you know, is that what you just said? Because <laughs> if you oh, want that. Only from the movie Die Hard. Only from the movie Die Hard. I want anal from Snape, but he's dead. I want anal from Snape. Anal from Snape. (laughs) 
You no. ruined the whole entire movie that I was going to watch. <laughs> Childhood ruined. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, if that's not a porn new movie, somebody should get on it. <laughs> and that is our free band name for the week. Anal from Snape. <laughs> Anal from Snape. Okay. If you close your eyes and, and like really listen to your soul, you can hear their entire first album. <laughs> Anal from Snape. I can hear that. I can I'm, hear that. Each song is graceful. less than two minutes. I'm taking graceful and elegant bow out. Okay. Good night. Good night. So then Toys wants to be like an art film. Yeah. What with the avant-garde set design and shit. And yet it's like a big budget studio Hollywood movie. That's not the place for bold avant-garde cinema that takes a chance. Yeah. So basically, in summary, Toys is a PG-13 kids film, romantic comedy, avant-garde war analogy art film. Who the fuck wants to see that? (laughs) Nobody wants to spend money to see a PG-13 kids film romantic comedy avant-garde war analogy art film where Robin Williams is back on the coke. I, yeah, I, I give it a pass and I'll forgive, I'll forgive Joan Cusack this one time. I love Joan Cusack. Yeah. I love her She's, so she's in a, I tried watching that show, um, Shameless. Oh yeah. With Howard H. Macy, I, I, I wasn't bowled over by it. William. She is William. in that. Mm-hmm. I'm always happy to see she's working. That. I did not know she was in that. I love her in everything. I love her in... She's oh, got... Gross Point Blank is a wonderful film. That's a wonderful film. Gross Point that film is like Yeah, that film is 80% ad-libbed. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I learned that in a in an interview with uh what's the name? The girl, the the woman, the the British slash Irish. She's named after a Beatles song. Hold on. Uh Mini Driver never. Mini Driver. Mini Driver. Okay. Mini Driver got the sack Monday morning Mini turning driver. back. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, no, she mentioned it in an interview, like, the majority of the film is just ad-lib, just them having fun and ad-libbing the film. Oh, huh, yeah. okay, okay, I'm gonna have to that check that one out love, one day. Yeah, that makes me love the film even more. Yeah. So, so the movie Toys was co-written and directed by Barry Levinson, and we need to talk about this man. Yeah. Okay. Barry Levinson, Academy Award winning auteur and part time hack. Part time hack? That's yes, part time hack. Yeah. His films are basically a crapshoot. Yes. You want to see a Barry Levinson film? You have a dice in your hand and you're shaking your hand, and whatever you roll, that's the movie you get. You may get an Oscar winning film or an Oscar nominated film. Or uh-huh. you may get Jimmy Hollywood or Rock the Casbah. So you never know <laughs> what you're going to get. Sure, he directed Wag the Dog, which I love with an undying passion. Yeah. Which 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 I will defend to the death. I love Wag the Dog. It's a great film. It's a perfect film, and I've watched it a million times. But... He also had a voiceover acting part in B movie, which makes him an enemy of the state who must be hunted down and executed. Yes, I, I got to agree with that. Any anybody attached to B movie should just be eradicated. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, so four years before Toys, Barry Levinson made Rain Man, and that was like a culturally defining film yes. to the point where he made this film and four years later he makes the film toys and the preview for toys makes rain man jokes does it okay yeah a rid the original preview for toys it was just a teaser and it was robin williams in one of those creepy fields that are in this movie and he's just standing there breaking the fourth wall 
talking to the audience. The, the thing that I that made me interested in toys is that the preview starts with Robin Williams in a field going, oof, that last trailer. Mm, wasn't that something? <laughs> oh, what about a different trailer? And, and it's literally him just breaking the fourth wall and doing his Robin Williams shtick. Yeah. And he says, toys coming this Christmas by Barry Levinson, director of Rain Man. And he starts doing Rain Man bits. Really? Okay. And I so, don't remember so, that at all. Yeah, I, I, that, I remember that to, like so vividly that I, I went and hunted it down. And of course, it's on YouTube, and it's, it's just Robin Williams doing more of his shtick, but that's what they were kind of selling the entire film on. Yeah. But, but Rain Man was just such a culturally defining, like, I can do Rain Man jokes now. Yeah, uh-huh. Because that's how big Rain Man was. So, so four years before Toys, Barry Levinson makes Rain Man, and I'm sure that he was still the talk of the town four years later for that. But one year before he made this week's film, Barry Levinson scored again with a film that I think is widely forgotten in terms of Barry Levinson. People are so focused on Rain Man yeah. and Oscar award winning and best picture and best actor and best supporting actor that people forget that he also did Bugsy. Bugsy. Warren Beatty as Bugsy Siegel, basically creating Las Vegas. That was probably the last <sighs> time Warren Beatty was credible. Yeah. That film was up for 10 freaking Oscars. Was it? Yeah. It was, oh, yeah. God. No, I looked I, it up. It was, I don't think it won any of the Oscars, maybe like one or two, but it was up for 10 Oscars. And that's in like, what, 1992? Yeah. So it, I think it was the one two punch of Rain Man, which basically made Tom Cruise. Uh, I would agree. And it was, it was definitely the first time he looked like a credible actor. Yeah. Yeah, he had, done things, he had done things before, but it was like Rain Man, which made him like, oh my God, now it's the Tom Cruise. Right. And then Rain Man is followed up by 10 Oscar nominations for Bugsy, and it's that one-two punch that gave Barry Levinson carte blanche to do whatever the hell he wanted next. He, he, basically, he was calling the shots. And so I'm assuming, I am assuming that what Barry Levinson said, it's like, yes, of course, Rain Man was huge. Rain Man was huge. And then after that, I did Bugsy. And yeah, now uh, Hollywood is just clamoring to me, asking me what I want to do next. And of course, I know what I want to do next. I envision a film, an <laughs> art film, a beautiful film, a perfect film, an amazing work of art. What I want to do is this. I want to remake the classic film The Graduate for children using a cast comprised solely of overly Jewish bees. <laughs> and also racially insensitive mosquitoes. Yes. And Ray Liotta. He has to be in this. He has to be in this. Just trust <laughs> me. Ray Liotta and Sting have to be in this. <laughs> but you know what? Maybe the world isn't ready for my overly Jewy kids movie. So how about a big budget anti-war fable that's also an ode to French expressionism? <laughs> and the studio said, yeah, fuck, whatever. You made Rain Man. Just do whatever the fuck you want. And that's how we got the single greatest Robin Williams, Joan Cusack, LL Cool J movie of all time. Yes. Because you do and have to course, give it that. Yeah, and of course this trio went on to to do so many movies, but of course the best Robin Williams, Joan Cusack, LL Cool J movie, where they're all related. Uh-huh. We're talking about a film where Robin Williams, Joan Cusack, and LL Cool J all came from the same family. Mm hmm Of course this is the best. Yeah. The plot doesn't matter much. The plot only exists to further various high concept Dadaist art inspired set pieces and artistic cinematography 
basically toys is what happens when you let a German set designer write the script. <laughs> That's basically. I would agree. Yes. What happened? I saw this film on Christmas Day during my sophomore year of high school. I saw it on Christmas with my brother. My brother and I hated each other to death, but one one uh, 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 thing we always had with each other is we would always see movies together on holiday. That was a family tradition. Yeah. I don't know when the last time was. that. And, and that... this movie didn't end it? No, no, no. The thing is, is that now I'm 40 and I have a wife and kids and I can't imagine just going, okay, well, I'm leaving in the middle of Christmas to see a Robin Williams art comedy. <laughs> like, I can see my parents going, okay, you guys have fun. We don't care about you. Go mm-hmm. ahead and watch whatever you want. We don't care. We're your parents. <laughs> I my parents being okay with that. I can't see anybody else being okay with that. Oh, um, excuse me, no. But every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, every big holiday, oh yeah, my brother and I would be in the theater. Especially during Thanksgiving because we didn't care about sports and we didn't know how to cook. So literally we would just be watching like double features, triple features. We would spend like all Thanksgiving at a movie theater. And then come out in time for dinner. <laughs> okay. Hey, not bad. Yeah. No, no, that's what we would do. And, and, and let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me go back to Thanksgiving. Okay. We watched, uh, of course, I, I woke up my kids to watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Because that is the only thing. That is the only thing in my mind during Thanksgiving that matters is the Macy's Thanksgiving day parade. Maxwell was already awake. I woke up Bella. Yeah. And, and, uh, Emerald doesn't count, I was already awake. but she was already awake. And, and, uh, what pissed me off is that they were saying two things during the Macy's Thanksgiving day parade. They said the Macy's Thanksgiving day parade coming to you live. Coming to you live on NBC. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, but you're also saying that the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade starts at 9 a.m. in all time zones. Yeah, live has gotten to be a really kind of spurious word. Right? You know, live live has gotten to be really confusing. Now, the Macy's it's Thanksgiving been- Day Parade, as I've always seen it, was live. Yeah. Like, you can't start the Macy's Day Parade at 9 a.m. in New York New York, and I'm in L.A. and have it all be live. Yes. That's physically freaking impossible. I interpret, interpret live that there is a possibility that I can see a shooting. I, That's every, live. Yeah. Every Thanksgiving... I am waiting for those random times that would happen when I'm growing up where the weather would be shit. Uh Unfortunately, global warming makes it a beautiful sunny day every Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. But back when I was a kid, there was always a chance that you could turn on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and it's fucking flooding in New York. Yeah. Or it's snowing. Or, like, there's 40 mile per hour winds and all of the balloons have started deflating. Like, that doesn't happen anymore. Every year, I'm like, oh, come on, what's the weather? What's the weather? God damn it, it's another beautiful day. <laughs> Fuck you, Al Gore. It's all your freaking now, fault. Now you'll hear people, and I'll just use Tasha as, as an example. She watches Supernatural live. She does. Meaning that she watches it when it's actually being aired. Yes. So, yeah, so live has gotten to be a really tricky word. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I hear you. So, so like, even though it makes me angry, I, I, I could still kind of accept them saying that the Thanksgiving Day Parade is live. 
It was just live yeah. two hours ago. Yeah. One thing that I really like about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is that where they film the parade is actually at the end of the parade in front of the Macy's uh, department store. So it takes a long time for the parade to start way at the end of New York and get all the way to the Macy's parade. So the first hour is full of musical performances from current Broadway plays. And I'm always excited to see that because I'm always excited to see what new Broadway play will be doing an, a, 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 a number during the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And also because there every year is one musical number which haunts my nightmares for months to come. Yeah? Which one's that? Did you, did you know, Bunny? Uh, like, I remember, like, previous years, like, oh, look, they've brought back cats. <laughs> okay. It's like, oh, yes, we totally want to see Rent with the original cast. Because we want to see these 20-year-olds struggling in New York now that they're all 49. That's what we <laughs> all want to see. So this year, the thing that haunted me was, hey, Bunny, did you know that they wrote a musical based on SpongeBob SquarePants, where it's all acted out by live actors? Really? It will haunt your nightmares. <laughs> It why is, why it would is. anybody need that? No, but let me tell you why it's important. This is this might be one of the first ever Broadway musicals that did this. The creators of SpongeBob Square SquarePants went to a bunch of famous people who then wrote music for the musical. I've never seen a musical before that featured music from a number of different famous musical artists. David Bowie wrote a song for the SpongeBob musical before he freaking died. <laughs> That's a professional. The Flaming Lips have a song in the SpongeBob musical. I've never seen a musical that was written by a bunch of dudes. Yeah. It was always just one or two people. Anyway, there's one thing I want to say before we end this piece of shit movie this week. Yes. And it's the fact that the so-called bad guy in this week's film, the military guy, uh -huh. he is right. Now, I want to talk about this. Okay. Look at it from his perspective. Or look at it from the perspective of the time that they're making the movie. Uh -huh. This is a company that seemingly only sells wind-up toys and novelty items uh -huh. in 1992. Yeah, there's got to be a bankruptcy there somewhere. It is a freaking miracle that this toy company is still in business. They should make war toys. That's the only way they're going to survive into the 2000s, for shit's sake. <laughs> This guy has the right idea. Robin Williams is going to bankrupt the company. There's no way they're still around. Mm -hmm. We're we are we here at Leland Toys are 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 happy to announce that we just partnered with uh, two major corporations: Blockbuster Video and Radio Shack. <laughs> yes, we're going to be the official toys of Blockbuster Video and Radio Shack. There's no way we can fail. We don't need war toys. <laughs> no, fuck this movie. This is a weird ass movie. This is a it, weird ass movie. It, it was weird and it was trying too hard to to be charming. You know? Yeah, I didn't care for it. Yeah. I didn't care for it at all. I didn't care that Joan Cusack was a robot. Yeah, no. No. By the time they release that Shyamalan, you don't give a crap. Yeah. So that's a wrap on this week's movie. Uh, so we're doing a month of Christmas movies. Uh -huh. And number one, the closest we get to Christmas, we're doing Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. That's going to be our once a year thing. Okay. That's going to be a regular Saturday night fling. Um, 
I really want to do Iron Man 3, although I might cave and do Die Hard just so that my wife doesn't rip my dick off. <laughs> that might be a, a, a prudent choice. Um, next week, finally, we are doing Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. Saving Christmas. Now, next week's homework is the playlist, which is on YouTube. The title is specifically tpofep.152-homework. After that, so not next week, but the week after that, I've got a homework assignment that I am so excited about. Really? Okay. I just learned about a 2002 hour-long Christmas special that only played one time on TV in select CW affiliates. Oh. Okay. It featured some of the best computer generated uh, uh, animation for 2002. Basically, what that means is you can make a better looking movie now using the game Minecraft. <laughs> the game Minecraft looks better than this game. Think. The first Sims game. Uh huh. Then think worse than that. <laughs> this is, I'm so excited about this. I'm going to try and get my kids to watch it with me. Yeah. It, and then for audio sounds, commentary because it's so bad. It is so bad. It sounds fun. It only, it only showed on certain CW affiliates one time. In 2002, and the only proof of its existence are select reviews on message boards in 2002. <laughs> and people over the years, like 2008, 2010, are combing the internet going, wait a second, what is this weird cartoon that people are talking about that appeared in 2002? It wasn't until like a, like a year or two ago that someone found a copy of it and put it on online and i watched some of it today and uh both natasha and i's jaws dropped really okay this is so bad now we're talking some stuff i'm so excited that i'm gonna definitely try and record some audio commentary because my kids will shit themselves over this <laughs> it is so bad yeah but next week, we're going to have fun with the Japanese uh, game shows. The week after that, we are doing the worst Christmas special ever <laughs> in the history of Christmas specials. Nothing is worse than this. Cool. I'm trying to explain how bad this is. It's worse than what I'm saying. <laughs> it is it's so much worse. And the grandmother, oh, I can't even explain it. I can't even, I, I'm, what I'm saying is, I'm really excited about this month of Christmas. I wasn't before, but once I started trying to put it all together into some sort of coherent thing this afternoon, I am super excited. Cool. We've got some good stuff lined up for this Christmas. But now that we're at the end of this episode, and we're looking back, you know, look at, look, looking back at this episode, I gotta say, um... You really gave her a whistle while I'm recording the podcast, Amber? Like, way to go. Way to go, Amber. You <laughs> gave her a rape whistle while I'm recording the podcast. That's great. It's okay, though, because I'm trying to finish up. I'm just trying to say I'm kind of upset, Amber. I'm kind of upset with you. I'm a little bit upset with you. And in as punishment, um, next week you have to watch a movie with me called the Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa. And I, I'm going to record audio commentary, okay? Hopefully you and me and Bella and Emerald. Okay? Okay? Okay. I'll try. Yeah. I don't know. There's you said I'll try. I'm taking that as a promise that you will watch it with me There's and record audio commentary with me. 
Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. You're going to love it. It's horrible. It's the worst thing you'll ever see. You're going to love it. Okay? When I say Rhapsody, it's spelled R-A-P-S-I-T-T-I-E. That's how they spell Rhapsody. No, no. R-A-P-S-I-T-T-I-E. You want to know why it's spelled like that? No one knows. <laughs> but that's how it's spelled. It seemed like a the, good idea at the time. Yeah, it seemed like a good idea at, at the time. And, and you might think that this is just going to be the worst thing in the world and that there's no saving this. You know who did a voice in this? Who? Mark Hamill. Oh. Okay. Nancy Cartwright. Nancy Cartwright? Yeah. That's... That's this is going to be this is going to be good. <laughs> That's Lisa Simpson. You may have seen her in in another movie called Toys. Uh yes, we did. That's, that's, the that's, not, who, uh, that's not Lisa Simpson. Yeah. Lisa or is it Simpson Bart? is Yurdly something. Yeah, okay. So this is Bart Simpson then. Oh, okay. Bart Voiced by a by a girl. There you go. There you go. Yearly Smith. Yes. That's who was in Toys. Gotcha. So what I'm saying is we've got a really exciting uh uh month of holiday madness planned for everybody. Uh, thanks for the rape whistle. That makes me feel good. Makes me feel that you're safe. But <laughs> Eleanor, come on. Let me try and wrap this up, okay? But now that I'm looking back at this. Thank you, Eleanor. Now, now that I'm looking back at this, at this episode, she's doing it on purpose now. <laughs> no, now she's just trying to piss me off. I just got to say, you know, I think this has been a pretty, pretty good episode. This has been a damn good episode. Thank you, thank you. That makes me feel better. I, I, oh, I agree. This has been a damn good episode. So until next week. I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless. Ah, hold on, Bella. Remember how earlier you promised me that you would sit and record audio commentary with me uh, for a 2002 CW cartoon called The Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa? I'm just reminding you here on tape that you promised that you would record audio commentary with me while we watch the cartoon The Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa. No, I'm just reminding you. No, you did off the air. And now I'm reminding you on the air that you and Amber will be recording audio commentary with me for the uh, Christmas special from 2002, The Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa. I'm just letting you know. Also, you need to go to bed. Also, the Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa. Also, I just want to point out that Rhapsody is spelled R-A-P-S-I-T-T-I-E. At first, I thought it was called the Raspity. No, it's Rhapsody, but spelled in a way that no one would ever spell it. Rhapsody. Rhapsody. Yeah. Can we finish this? Heathens! See, there, I finished it because I, I stopped at Godless to try and get you to watch a cartoon with me. Do you want me to start over again? I'll start yes. over again. Um, and I am Reverend Steve. Thank you for reminding me. I forgot what my name was. <laughs> and I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you Godless. Do you want to watch next week's movie with me? <laughs> it's Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. It's a Christian movie where Kirk Cameron saves Christmas from the evil liberals and I'm assuming gays. It's worse okay. than that. It's yeah. worse than that. Yeah. He he stuck around during the during the uh is that a rape kazoo? <laughs> no! do, you have, do you have a rape kazoo? Okay, did you get that from Eleanor? Okay.
And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Hey, you douche And? And poopy toots. <laughs> you know, speaking of heathens, all my friends are heathens. Yeah. 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 Take it slow. You hate punks worse than anything? That's so weird. I hate punks worse than anything. <laughs> Probably get it for me because I have always hated punks worse than anything, and now you hate punks worse than anything. We have so much in common. It's good. Like, it's nice that you share. Yeah, like you know, another thing we have in common, which I thought was weird, um, we have the same last name. Isn't that weird? Huh. I never noticed. Yeah, that's I weird. Didn't... Also, what are you doing okay. awake? It's like ten o'clock. Go to bed. Okay, well, the more you don't go to bed, the earlier I'm waking you up I for school. So okay, I know you do. But go to bed. And <laughs> cut and print. Cut and print. <laughs>